Voice acting is something I'm extremely passionate about. People who have been watching me since the dark times would know it's how I got my first bit of momentum. That I struck gold. And I have been trying to kick that momentum to death ever since. How many more tester videos do I need to make before you guys get the message? Voice acting is the grease that keeps a game's story going. When trying to transmit a story to a player, there's no better way to get it across than with voice acting. Well, at least in my opinion. Something about hearing someone speak a line rather than just reading it has a lot more impact to me. So much has to go into making good voice acting. You need the right actor, the right equipment, a good script, and a director who cares about the finished product. Oftentimes, if even one of these things is out of balance, it can cause people to only see the negatives. Frankly, I don't think it's fair to brand something as out and out bad without at least knowing what went into its production. That's why today, not only are we taking a look at bad voice acting, but I also have to shed a little light on why it's so bad. First off is a little segment I like to call Sega Does with Sega Do, and what that do is be bad at everything. So there are three Sega games that are synonymous with bad voice acting, and I feel it's appropriate to go through in order from least to most egregious. First is Sonic Adventure. Along with pumping Sonic full of that great big D, Sonic Adventure was also the second game ever to give Sonic a voice. Sure, Sonic had a voice in Sonic CD, but that's sort of like saying a baby's first words or it's crying. Before this, when thinking about Sonic's voice, you had Jaleel White from the Sonic cartoons, that being Sonic the Hedgehog and Sonic Sat AM. I actually think that Jaleel White was a pretty good Sonic, but for this game, even more care would be taken. As we've discussed before, Sonic Adventure was to be Sonic's big re-debut, introduce him to a whole new generation, and reacquaint him with people who thought Sonic R just looked too... pointy. Love and care went into every facet of this game, and while it's now been proven that not all love is distributed equally, surely the voice acting for Sonic, something that would stick in people's heads just as much as his iconic design, would be handled with the utmost attention. Watch out! You're gonna crash! Ah! Uh oh! What's this? Get away from there! Ah! Hey, Knuckles! What's up? What are you doing, Knuckles? Don't mess with me now. Now, you may have noticed uh, a few problems. They got a kindergartner for Tails, Sonic sounds like a skateboarder for Jesus who just flipped his hat backwards to keep it real, and Puncher the Magnificent sounds like every line is spoken after head trauma. As for why the acting is so bad, the voice actor for Rouge and Omachow, Lana Minnelli, who also acted as the voice director, elaborated on the odd way Sega went about trying to cast the game. The decision came directly from Sonic creator and man, I feel at least partially responsible for getting fired Yuji Naka, that instead of having an adult woman voice Tails, a young child, they would get an actual child. Yeah, in case you didn't know, basically every young boy in anything is just an adult woman. Oh, and Popeye for a time. But that's a different story for a different time. So instead of getting a- ah, screw it, I'll talk about it now, actually. So since Jack Mercer, a strong man with a strong name, was drafted for service in World War II, the voice of Olive Oil, Mae Castell, filled in for roles on at least six different shorts. I can talk about what interests me sometimes, it doesn't always have to be about Sonic! Anyway, so instead of getting an actual actor, they got two brothers, cause in the middle of voicing Tails, the first brother got older, and they swapped him out for the newer, younger model. There was also a mandate that Knuckles had to have a Jamaican accent and speech pattern to reflect his design influence. As you heard, that was all but totally ignored. The most damning thing that led to awkward and stilted delivery was the fact that the game didn't have the luxury of its own mouth movements. Nowadays, when a game is set to be a major release in America, they'll go through the effort to give it its own lip flaps. Except if you're a Dragon Ball, in which case, screw that, it'll look fine if we just leave it as is, right? ME! I'm sure you know what happens if you only have the original lip flaps to work with. I suspected that you were behind all this trouble. When was it that we last met? 300 years ago? I know that you stop at nothing to satisfy your evil desires, and in that I recognize the influence of your father, the spitting image! All these things, the unchangeable lip movements that need to be matched, bizarre orders from the higher-ups at Sega, and the general state of dubbing in the 90s made things get really, really hairy. However, going forward, Sonic's voice acting troubles wouldn't be so much tied to its quality, Rather, it's bizarre changes. By Sonic Heroes, the voice cast from Adventure had settled into their roles and made possibly the best overall cast of Sonic characters there's ever been. Next game. Hey Shadow. Hey Shadow. Hey Shadow. Hey Shadow. Hey Shadow. Now if it isn't Shadow. Who are you people? By the end of that run of games, I'd say the voices were back to being just as good as they were in Heroes. Jason Griffith's Sonic is personally my favorite voice for the characters. Then colors came in and Roger Craig Smith and the gang took over. This one, it 
took a long time to get its footing, probably since it's the only one that regularly rotated out characters. But under the right circumstances, it was a great group! Then they took Roger out behind a woodshed before taking him back out from behind the woodshed a few months later. But what about a property that instead of improving, only got worse and worse with time? Oh, hey Shenmue, I wasn't even thinking about you, I was just thinking about Sonic again! Shenmue, one of the biggest gambles in gaming history. One man's vision to make video games more than just kids' toys. A fully fleshed out world, a robust combat system, and a story of vengeance would be the Dreamcast's killer app. Programmers working tirelessly to create gaming's magnum opus, and it was all destroyed because some stupid gringos didn't know how to talk good! The daytime's the time to look for people. Ain't no one around at night. You know, that's a good point. Yep. The security guards are crude and nasty, always staring at my ass when I walk by. Goro of the Harbor will be more than happy to put his life on the line for you, bro! Yeah. See ya. Years ago, I was Chinese. Go home early sometimes and give her a back rub or something, okay? I'd like to help, but they might come after me if I do that. Yeah, the legacy of Shenmue in the West as compared to the East is completely different given the fact that you cannot take this seriously. Ryu approaches the man who murdered his father with the same aggression you would if you found a stain on your jacket. The whole thing is filled with ridiculous accents and comes across a lot more like a really, really bad dub of a Chinese action film rather than the epic they were going for. This is for a few reasons, actually. Firstly, one of the major things that led to this game's poor voice acting is that instead of outsourcing to an American company, Sega decided to do everything in-country. That means they got English speakers living in Japan to do all the voice acting. Now what's wrong with this, you may ask? I don't know if you know this, but English isn't the main language of Japan. It's Japanese. So instead of having native English speakers be able to direct them in how best to do their lines, they were instead getting someone who at best spoke English as a second language, or at worst, didn't speak English at all. Not only that, but one of the weirdest mandates for any voice acting role is that Sega really pushed to find voice actors who looked like the characters they were voicing. If that is true, let's all take a quick moment of silence for poor Paul Lucas. Yeah, you're not going to Hong Kong, because the Great Chai will defeat you! <laughs> <laughs> this is such a completely backwards idea because it doesn't matter what you look like when you do voice acting. This is what Goku looks like. This is what SpongeBob looks like. This is what Shaggy looks like. Bad example. What I'm trying to say is that with all these compounding factors, it's not hard to see how Shenmue ended up the way it did. Even Shenmue's spiritual successor Yakuza wasn't free from this sort of problem. The first game was actually dubbed into English on the PS2, and seeing as it was a game about the Japanese equivalent to gangsters, the choice was made to make it more like GTA. And the way they went about doing this was to add as much swearing as a fan translation. Stupid! Fucking! Motherfucker! Fuck you! You're not coming in here, you fucking asshole! Unfucking believable! The fuck, you piece of shit! This asshole's a fucking pig! Fuck, this is bad, man! Chill out. You son of a bitch! And it wasn't until the most recent entry, Yakuza Like a Dragon, that the franchise finally got the dub it deserved, and even brought back the original actor for. <laughs> which makes me so irrationally happy. But surely, with such a long time between entries in Yakuza's dub, Shenmue's dub would have improved as well, with the massive time frame between Shenmue 2 and the crowdsourced Shenmue 3. I'm heading for the Sunflower Grove. I heard that's where the thugs went. Are you serious? If you find them, then you should be able to find out where my father is. That's the plan. Don't worry, I'll find them. Thank you so much. How is it just as bad? No disrespect is meant to the voice actors, especially Corey Marshall, the English voice of Rio. It's obviously not their fault that it turned out this bad, and I'm not just saying that because Corey Marshall looks like this and could break me like a stick of dry spaghetti. The direction stayed the exact same, and while on the one hand it's admirable that they stuck to their guns on how Shenmue is presented to the West, it could have gotten a little better, at least by accident. The directors of these projects have directed much bigger and better projects, so between Shenmue's 1, 2, and 3, there's only really one person that could be calling such odd shots, and that's Yu Suzuki himself. Given how dedicated he is to his vision, maybe Ryu sounding like a narcolept was all part of the big plan. The final Sega game is, uh... 
Well, actually, you know what it is. We all know what it is. It's probably why you clicked on this video. You wanted to hear about it. Let's just hold off on it for now. Let's talk about Chaos Wars. Chaos Wars is an interesting beast. In America, it's only known for- Wow, I really can't move my body. That, but in Japan, this is actually a game that it's shocking it got made in the first place. Chaos Wars is actually a massive crossover with a bunch of Japanese developers. Companies like Atlas, Arzu, Red, and Idea Factory all put their franchises forward to be represented in the crossover, with Idea Factory themselves handling the development. The game was a modest success in Japan, and as such, it was decided to bring the game to the good old US of A! It should be noted, though, that red flags were immediately at half mast when the game was announced to be a GameStop exclusive. Sure, that's a little more acceptable than being a Target exclusive or something, but still, it's not like store exclusivity ever got somebody to go there. Well, now I gotta go to GameStop! Let me just get on this baggy hoodie, pair of sunglasses, and face mask so nobody recognizes me! Oh, and I better wait for cover of darkness so all the deals will be asleep. Yeah, tell me when GameStop starts stocking penicillin, then I'll go. Copy that. But what makes the affair all the more concerning is the fact that the game's localization would be handled by O3 Entertainment. I can write the whole O3 wiki on the palm of my hand, that's how you know we're dealing with a good developer. The company was not one known for localizing, and in fact, I think the word known is still a little too strong, and Chaos War was one of the last games they published in America before going belly up. As you already heard, now I think I've got my head around this different dimensions business, but how do I get back to Tokyo? Ah, ah! I guess. We should stop teasing her already. <sighs> ah! Screaming! It came from the bag alley! Sounds like a girl. I'll go check it out. There are some problems. As for where those problems come from, let's take a look at that voice cast themselves. Tyler Jelinek, Quest Jelinek, K Jelinek, Lee Jelinek. With names like those, would it shock you to figure out what the last name of O3 CEO was? That's right, Chris Jelinek was the one who ran the company, and in order to save a buck on hiring more professional voice actors, got members of his own family to fill in the important roles. It's a pretty shady tactic that shows either the company was in such dire straits they couldn't afford anything else, or that they were too cheap to get professionals and called in a favor for helping change a tire on their day off. Speaking of professionals, we're moving over from the realm of professional voiceover to professional athletes. In the history of games, it's always been a big deal when a real star comes in to do voiceover, and that extends from actors to those people what smack a ball over and over again. NBA 2K15 is the installment of the yearly sports franchise meant to brave 2014, and with performances like this, what could possibly go wrong? The players, on the other hand, are going to reserve judgment. How's that? You got all the skill to make a contribution, but the proof will come between the lines. Tonight, time will tell if you can help or not. Talking about making sure I get my touches, yo. Move the ball, share it with your teammates. Make the extra pass so that we can get easy looks, you got it? Who have thought? About what? That a young buck like you could actually do the right thing and avoid getting his sorry butt kicked out the hold game. Me back. He told me to chill. So this is probably one of the more simple explanations, given the fact that sports games are constantly striving for a perfect one-to-one -one realism. That's so one day they can corral them all into one big room and then kill them before replacing them with AI. The next step of making all the players look like their flesh Gundam counterparts was to make them sound the same too. So who better to voice the players than the players? Oh wait, I wrote it down here, um, just one second, let me, um... Oh yeah, professionals! In the same way you wouldn't get Mike Pollock to put some funk on a nasty dunk, you wouldn't get Al Jefferson to do voiceover. But only one of those things has happened. Do the work, listen to the culture, and the result will take care of themselves. Because at the end of the day, it's not about the money, the nice hotel, the private jets. Remember that and you will be fine, okay? It certainly doesn't help that someone who doesn't even know how big a basketball is wrote some of these lines. But athletes aren't the only ones allowed to pollute our ears, as I'd like to introduce you to Dimitri Vegas! Now, seeing as I own WarioWare Get It Together, you can probably guess I'm not much into the DJ and clubbing scene, so I had to do my research on this guy. Dimitri and his brother, like Mike, are a pair of DJs who got their start in the late 2000s. Dimitri himself is a massive fan of nerd culture, being a fan of Spider-Man and appearing in films like Men in Black International and Rambo Last Blood, both critically acclaimed darlings, so it was a slam dunk that him and his brother would compose a remix of the classic Techno Syndrome Mortal Kombat theme used in Mortal Kombat 11's trailers. So as a thank you, the developers of Netherrealm modeled him as a skin for Sub-Zero! like Mike, I guess! 
What can the Lin Kuei teach the Shokan? The art of stealth and surprise. <laughs> Enemies should be met head on. Will the Shirai Ryu keep the peace? Scorpion promised to honor it. It's like looking in a mirror. I see only my cracked reflection. Then I'll blind you to end your pain. Now, people have been extremely harsh towards Dimitri following the release of this skin. Not helped along by the fact that Sub-Zero's usual voice actor is Steven Bloom. Or as you may know him, Spike Spiegel. Or Wolverine. Or Amon, or Orochimaru, Batman, Jack Kamen, Kuyoshiro Toto, Vincent Valentine, Vilgax, Ares, and also Goku. So it's pretty obvious that anyone else was going to be a step down, but Dimitro is more like a tumble down. A long, long flight of stairs. There's also a chance that he's a big time music act, and now some director's gonna tell him what to do? Getting starstruck is often a problem when bringing in big names for a game. Look at Peter Dinklage in Destiny. The Hive haven't been on Earth in centuries. That wizard came from the moon. That man has two Emmys under his belt, and he sounds like he's telling you that the barbecue chips are in aisle three. But these are all just a hill of beans compared to one of the most infamous dub jobs in all of voice acting. House of the Dead 2 is a great arcade shooter, but an even better movie. I don't even need to introduce anything about this game, just listen to the greatest hits. How could anyone do this? I don't want to die! My god. What's wrong with this city? <laughs> People of the AMS, I am Goldman. So this is Goldman's headquarters. Only man himself can control its fate. It's like they're inviting me in. I've been waiting for you, friends. Goldman! Do you know what you're doing? I'm fully aware of what I'm doing. Can't you see? Man committed a sin, disturbing the life cycle of nature. The original sin that man is responsible to. To protect the life cycle. Goodbye, Goldman. This is a new breed of bad, a 10 course meal of disaster. Everything sounds like they just recorded each line after being shuffled into a room by armed thugs. I don't know what this script means. I wrote this back in June. It just says make a joke. What did that mean? What psychopath? There are a lot of reasons why this is so bad. First off is the English speakers in Japan problem from before, but what's more is the workload. You may be thinking, workload, it's voice acting. You just stand there and make a funny voice into a microphone for a few hours and you get paid at the end. Well, that's a gross oversimplification, but you got the right idea. But this wasn't just one game. House of the Dead 2 was one of three games they recorded in a single day. I'm lucky the video you're watching right now gets recorded in two and these stallions managed to voice three full video games in a single nine to five. That wasn't him saying life cycle weirdly, that was just his lungs giving out. But what really pushed it over the edge was that nobody cared. Not that they didn't want to do a good job, but that the House of the Dead isn't a game that requires good voiceover. The game was designed to be played in an arcade machine. In an arcade, with loud music to overpower all the other loud music from the other arcade cabinets, and from the loud natural sound of people in an arcade. At that point, it didn't matter what they were saying. Every line in the game could have been a recipe to prepare bread and nothing would have been lost. A lot of games with infamously bad English dubs went through a process just like this. Mega Man's 8 and X4 were produced with an English crew in Japan, and I thank them for that. We may be able to locate another energy emission from the radar room. When we find that media, we'll find Dr. Wowie. Iris! Ah! No, this isn't happening! There's no reason for me to go on! What? What am I fighting for? That last line there is so infamous that it's basically a rite of passage for later Zero voice actors to redub the line themselves. No! This isn't happening! There's no reason for me to go on! What am I fighting for? Alas, his warped destiny reached its bitter conclusion. What, what am I fighting for? I don't have a lead-in for this one, but I'm not leaving it out. 
I should have been the one to fill your dark soul with light! I hope today served as a chance to delve further into what makes bad voice acting. So often it's just chalked up to somebody not being able to act, but that's not the case. Most of the time. Oftentimes people are just put in unenviable positions with factors totally out of their hands. Whether it's up to cultural differences, insane demands, or flat out lack of enthusiasm from higher ups, any amount of things can go wrong. So next time you hear somebody bomb a voice performance, know that more goes... So the next time you hear somebody bomb in a voice performance, know that more goes into it than you think. Of course, I never turned into a performance I'm not proud of, so I've got nothing to... Oh, that, that's, that is my old voice acting page on Casting Call Club and Behind the Voice Actor from when I was 14. Oh, you know what? You don't even need to click on it. I'm sure it's just boring. No, no, no. <laughs>